Well, hey crafty friends, happy Friday to you, or whatever day it might be if you're watching this on replay. My name is Heidi Scott, this is DIY Dreaming, and I have some really fun and easy and quick kitchen projects for you that involve lemons, and we're gonna put a little twist on it because instead of using all your traditional colors, we're gonna focus on the color navy blue. So it's gonna be really awesome. Um, I can't wait to share you everything. As you're hopping on Facebook, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. That really helps. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to ask questions. Uh, thank you so much for joining me there. And anyways, let's hop right in. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some different things that you can make for your kitchen super easy. And we're gonna be using this adorable stencil. <laughs> I love stencils. From Maker Studio, let me get mine out. It is, um, it's called, I've used it quite a bit. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Okay, so we're gonna use different pieces of this part. And then it has some other bits and pieces to it that we'll use as well on different projects. This is this really cute like strip of different lemons in different shape of shapes. These are super cute. Keep in mind that these could be lemons, but they could also be limes or oranges. Um, here's another, whoop, <laughs> let me just throw that at you. Here's another piece. And then there is, there are some little like leaves. So it's a great set. And we're going to do a couple different things with it. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to do a tea towel, but I want to jazz it up just a little bit. So I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you, first of all, how you can um, use fabric hot glue and some ribbon around the base of your tea towel, and it will be washable. Then we're gonna stencil it, and then we are going to um, paint in the lemon. So let me just clear my stuff just a smidge. This was just so you could have a little preview of what we would be doing today, and I think I'll move it back here so I can actually have some room to work. I can't wait for you to see this idea. So stay with me. Also, I have a really cute rolling pin to show you, so stay with me for that. And we're gonna make note cards. I have tons of different things. Okay, so we're starting with a tea towel from Walmart. These currently are my favorite ones to use. They are kind of a creamy ivory color. They have a loop in the corner. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, they're hemmed. They're not as thin as those flower sack tea towels. And they're 18, I think it's 18 inches by 28 inches long. So see, they've got this nice little hook on one end. So we're gonna stencil and decorate the other end of it. And when it's finished, I will heat set it with a hot iron and it will be washable and dryable and usable and super cute. Okay, the first thing I wanna show you is how to add a band of ribbon across the bottom. We're gonna be using my low temperature hot glue gun, which is called a Cool Shot. And we're gonna be using the specific glue that that company makes for fabric, which makes it washable. Um, you can pick this stuff up at Hobby Lobby, at Walmart, probably at most craft stores, but the brand is Sure Bonder. And I have washed quite a few things that I've made with that um, brand of hot glue, and it works just great. Okay, I love this ribbon. This is navy blue and white stripe. It totally says summer to me. And so I think if I have enough on here, I hope I do. Ooh, it's going to be close. Yeah, we're going to use this. Uh, this ribbon, I believe, came from Hobby Lobby, but I wouldn't, wouldn't bet my life on it. This is the brand. Um, yeah, I don't know for sure. But you can get navy blue and white striped ribbon lots of different places. I'm just going to cut the end of this off here. 
All right, and we're going to put the band of ribbon on the bottom of it before we stuff it. That just will make it much easier. Okay, so I'm going to lay my ribbon across the bottom, and I usually like to leave the hem just below it, not fastened. And I'm going to start at one end and just put a little stripe of glue right here. Let's see where can I put my paper plate for my glue gun? It's going to have to be right here. So I'm going to do a band along the bottom and then we'll do an upper band too. And you guys, um, I, these tea towels, I have one that I've already made that I'll show you in just a minute. They turned out so, 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 so cute. And I want to, I want to bless two people with them today because I have loads of tea towels. I don't need two more, even though these are absolutely adorable. Um, so I want to give these away tomorrow morning. Uh, today is, what is today? Friday, the 2nd of July, 2021. So I want to give these away Saturday morning, July 3rd, 2021. And if you're watching live today or you catch us on replay anytime today, Friday, um, if you will just sprinkle this video to your social media, to your Facebook page, um, then I'll put your name in my hat and I'll pull randomly two people's names tomorrow morning and pop these in the mail to you. And um, they're just so fun for summer. So that's what my plan is for these tea towels. Um, and yeah, it would be great if you would just sprinkle this to your Facebook page, which in case people ask me all the time, what does it mean to sprinkle? And I don't blame you. I didn't know any of those words either. I'm terrible with technology. I didn't really know any of those words either um, until just maybe a year and a half ago. And it just means there's a little button down below that says share and you just put this video on your Facebook page so your friends and family can see it too. And that's really all that means. Okay, now I'm going up the side right here and then I'm gonna go all the way along the top. You have to kind of eyeball where that is. This fabric glue, um, this Sherbonder fabric glue, it is low temperature also, which is super nice because it's not fun to get burned by your hot glue gun. Okay, we're almost getting there. Then I'm gonna show you how I finish the back of it off. Okay, so this is what I have so far. It's glued all the way across the bottom, but not on the back. So I am going to, let's see if I can hold this. I'm gonna cut this short so it's about the width of the hem right there. And I'm just gonna glue it right along that hem right there on both sides. And it will be, you know, this is a, um, this is a project that you can wash. Now don't wash it with all your dirtiest towels, you know, on super hot on a really rough cycle, but it's completely washable and dryable as long as you use reasonable, you know, wash on cool and dry on cool or medium warm. And um, the colors will stay vibrant because we're gonna be using this awesome gel art ink in just a minute. Oh, and I am gonna lay down some links in just a second in fact i'll do it right now so that you can take a peek if you would like at what i am using okay let me just see if i can do this real quick hmm okay i'm gonna have to grab my links i'm so sorry uh hang on two seconds like i said <laughs> technology is not my greatest Strength. I do want to show you the um, what the tea towels look like, what the container looks like from Walmart. Okay. All right. Let 
my iPad doesn't like my finger. So sorry, so sorry. There we go, okay. All right, so it's glued on both edges, just right on the hem. And this is what it looks like right now. And honestly, you could do a bunch of different tea towels with different ribbons. Um, I don't recommend using the wired ribbons for this project because the wire, I just don't think it's gonna go through the washing machine and the dryer well without getting rusty or crunchy or breaking or, you know, it can be sharp. So I would definitely not use a wired ribbon. All right, and the tea towels that I am currently loving are these. They're Craft Basics. Two pack of tea towel, loop in the corner, 18 by 28, and this is what the package looks like. It's not with the, um, with the kitchen stuff. It's in the crafting department, and this I usually find at my Walmart next to all the embroidery and embroidery hoop stuff. Okay, let's do the next part of this project, which is really fun and super easy. And we are just going to stencil. I'm gonna put a couple pieces of paper towel underneath it because while this is a little bit thicker tea towel, it's still thin enough that the ink can go through and you don't want that on your crafting surface. Okay, and let's figure out where is the center of our tea towel. I'm just gonna pinch it, which I'm sure if you're a crafter, you know that trick too. And there's my center. And we're using this adorable stencil right here. I'm going to eyeball it. Um, let's see. I'm not gonna use the outside border. I'm just gonna use the inside bits. And for this project, we're gonna be using some of this yellow gel art ink from Maker Studio. Oh, thank you so much for the stars. I didn't see who, who gave me those, but I appreciate it. This is called Over Yonder. And then we're gonna be using this awesome blue, which is called Hush Your Mouth. This is like one of my favorite colors that they have. All right, and I'm gonna use one of their new spreaders from Maker Studio and then one of the old little um, white cut. You can cut them into whatever shape you want. And we're gonna do, like I said at the start of this, this is a navy blue themed kitchen with lemons. And the only thing we're gonna do yellow is the actual lemon itself. So I'm gonna take my ink, and you know what, let's do the yellow first because sometimes I get excited and I forget what I'm doing. And I don't wanna just rush over the top of that yellow and not remember that I said we were gonna do that in yellow. And that, that could be something that I would be likely to do. So I just squeezed a little bit of yellow out onto my paper plate. We are not fancy here. Um, I frequently do all my artist palette stuff off of a paper plate. So I just did the outline of the lemon from the stencil in yellow. And when I'm all finished stenciling, I will come back and paint that whole entire thing in, in yellow. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, next we're gonna do the blue part. And I'm just gonna put a big pile of the blue on here. Let me look under the light and make sure that I am using the blue because sometimes it's hard to tell. Yeah, the blue is called Hush Your Mouth. I don't know why, that's a funny name, but um, a lot of the things that Maker Studio has have these kind of fun names. All right, and this is their new squeegee. I'm just taking a big blob of the blue ink and I'm gonna push it through the holes on the stencil. And I'm gonna be careful not to go outside of my lines. And also I'm gonna not keep going over and over and over the same areas because that always creates problems. I do like the feel of their new um, squeegee thing, their new tool. It feels uh, flexible, but it feels really solid. 
it's nice. And this, I thought initially that the size was too big, and now I really like the size of it. So. just going to try to get these leaves around this lemon blue without getting into my um, lemon with the blue. I'll lift this up in just a second to show you guys. Okay, we need just a teeny, whoops, a teeny tiny little bit more. Oh, hey, and I forgot to tell you guys, if you are watching this on uh, Facebook, then most likely these comments right here are in your way. But you should be able to swipe them either side to side or up or down, depending on what device you're watching on, either with your finger or with your mouse, and they should disappear. So there's nothing I can do about those comments being in your way. Uh, but you should be able to fix that yourself. Well, I think I need just a smidge more. Okay. I am going to just look over my project to make sure I don't have any big clumps and that I have everything covered, which I think I do. All right. And this is what it looks like. I'm gonna show you what my paper towel underneath looks like too, because I want you to see. See, that's what it looks like. And this is the paper towel that I used underneath it. So you can see that the ink did go through a little bit. So let's just pull this off. Looks great. I love the design of the word lemons. It's this like old fashioned font with a whole bunch of scrolly things and curly do's and it's very nice. Okay, so here is our tea towel so far. Look how cute that is. But you can see how the lemon disappears. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of this lemon this yellow color, excuse me, and a little artist brush, and I'm gonna just paint that in. And then, when the whole thing is dry, I will, um, could you see what I was doing there? Hopefully. I will um, heat set it with a hot iron. I'll, I'll let it dry m several hours before I do that. And then I'll heat set it with a hot iron and it'll be good to go. And whoever receives it, um, I'm gonna give two of these away. I'll show, the, show you the other one in just a second. Um, I'm gonna put people's names in my hat, anyone who sprinkles this video to your Facebook page. So um, that is how I will be giving it away, giving these two away. I'll just pull one name randomly and oops. All right. Perfect. So here is the project. And I will use paper towel to blot a little bit of that excess yellow off, but I don't want to mess it up. So let me show you now what the finished one looks like. And it is so cute. This would look so cute on your stove door. So say in the comments, sprinkled. And if you're liking this project as we're going along, do some of these. These are really good. Or these, but these are better. Uh, just to let me know that you're liking this first of our kitchen projects with navy blue as the focus and this lemon stencil. So when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. I mean, that basically says to me, make the best of whatever situation that you're in. It's 
Um, lemons are, are kind of sour, but they're also sweet and I love lemonade. I just think this is a great, this is a kind of a common saying, but it's, it's a great saying. It really is. It's just encouraging us to be positive and take whatever comes our way and turn it into something good like lemonade. So anyways, okay, so that was the first one. All right, the next thing that project I wanna show you, we're not gonna actually do, but I'm gonna tell you all about it. This is a rolling pin. Um, I find these all the time at Goodwill for maybe $2. And I think the reason why is that most people don't use rolling pins very much. You buy one because you think you need it, but then you don't usually end up making that homemade pie crust or you know, whatever. We usually, we're such a instant kind of society that we just buy it already made. So a lot of people will hang on to their rolling pin and then it won't have gotten hardly any use and they'll donate it. And that's when I grab them for crafting. You can also find these at any kitchen supply store. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them at um, Target, everywhere for just maybe five or ten dollars there but usually for around two dollars at thrift stores so i painted the barrel of this one with a creamy white color before i came live and then i stenciled it with that same stencil we just used i only did the word lemons in the same navy blue hush your mouth gel art ink. You can use the same stuff for this as well as for paper. I'll show you in just a minute. And for glass. I'll show you that in just a minute too. So I just did the word lemons and then I did the outline of this little lemon and I painted it in with the same yellow just exactly like what I showed you. And then I tied a ribbon on it. And then I guess I put my spray away but let me show you just to make certain that it's good and solid on here, I took a coat, this spray, clear spray matte sealer, Rust-Oleum, that I usually pick up at Walmart for just a color, couple dollars, and I sprayed it, the whole thing, with one coat. Um, so I wanna show you, though, a little tip for painting and stenciling rolling pins, because they're hard. I mean, as soon as you hang on to it, your barrel is turning, and then where do you, how do you set it down without messing it up? So I found that the easiest thing to do is to get some sort of a little basket or tray or something like this and to put your rolling pin this way. And then you can twist the barrel and work with it and the barrel isn't touching anything. So it can dry easy. So I just wanted to share that because I have gotten some questions about how do you paint rolling pins without them getting all smudged up? And then how do you stencil the barrel of them? Um, so for this project, you could also, if you wanted, um, leave the barrel the neutral, the natural wood color and just paint the handles. Uh, it, you could do any color you like. I just, this is what I landed on for my navy lemon kitchen theme. Pretty cute, huh? And I think this, this rolling pin was probably just a couple of dollars. So um, that is another idea for a lemon and navy kitchen. Um, okay, here's a super cute one too. And uh, you know, I'm always showing you guys how I like to take um, tarnished silver platters and paint the center of them and then stencil something on them. Uh, but usually I'm showing you how to paint those black or how to paint them with a creamy ivory color. But you know, navy blue is a gray color as well. So this is not a silver platter. This is just this darling little hammered tin piece. Um, I don't even know where it came from, but it's pretty cute just by itself. And I just took a pretty navy colored paint and I painted this whole thing with two coats of navy paint. Um, you will notice if you look carefully, 
that I didn't do a perfect job around the edges, you don't need to. That's impossible unless you're a professional painter. So I just choose to not focus on that and do the best I can. And from a distance, you're not gonna even notice that it's not perfectly around the edges. So this is two coats of navy colored paint. And then whenever I'm stenciling on paint on a tray of some sort, I either like to give it a coat of this clear matte sealer before I stencil, or I like to use a little clear wax, like some beeswax or something like that, before I stencil. And that way, there's less risk that your stencil is gonna pull the paint off of the plaid, off of your silver piece. Did you know that? Um, it also gives you a crisper impression. So I used wax for this one. Just one quick coat on a paper towel, put it on, wiped it off. And then I used that same adorable stencil to stencil lemons. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And I just used a white ink, where is it? Here it is. White gel art ink, which is called, well, I declare. Isn't it cute? And it's gonna look so cute in my kitchen. I'm creating like a little vignette of this, the, um, the towel, the uh, rolling pin, and now I want to show you the next thing, and that is, I think this is a super cute idea. Okay, so I had some of these glass canisters. This one's dirty, so don't look too closely at it, but um, it needs to go in the sink. It just, they glass canisters just get your fingerprints on them it's at least 10 years old and it has this adorable little cap on it it was something that um, I used to be a rep with a company called Southern Living at Home I don't know if you know that company if you do give me this or a heart if you remember Southern Living at Home it was a great company they had a beautiful line of home decor and so I had these canisters and I don't have them currently in use in my kitchen right now and so I thought it would be fun to doll them up with this whole navy blue lemon theme. Okay, the other one I'm gonna show you in just a minute, but I did wanna give you one other idea. In addition to using um, faux lemons, you could also use faux limes, and these were just a few that I grabbed. I have a bunch more in my basement. Fill the canister up and then this like for example, this stencil right here, it, where's the back to it? Here it is. It could be limes just as easily as it is lemons. And this one could be a lime tree. See the little fruit? Just as easy as it is a lemon. And these especially, these are so cute. These could be limes as well. So you could just use some green ink if you wanted to do that idea. And you could stencil whatever part of the stencil that you wanted on your glass canister. And when you use this gel art ink that we've been using today, it's gonna stay put, but when you're ready to change it, you just put it in the sink with a little soapy water and a sponge and it will come right off. So it's not even permanent to your piece. Okay, get ready for the cute factor. Oh my gosh, this turned out adorable. Okay, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. I just used that same stencil in navy blue in the Hush Your Mouth ink. And then I filled up my canister with all kinds of different bits of things that I've had over the years. Because uh, I've always liked to do container decorating where you swip th swap, swip, swap things in and out. So I have some little lemon slices and then lemons in a couple different sizes. Um, so I just pile all that stuff in there and I think it's adorable, the yellow behind the navy blue. I know on this, on this video, it might be kind of challenging to read what it says on the front of it, but in person, it's super cute. So any kind of glass container that you have, 
you could do this with. Also, if you just had some glass cylinders and some lemon pieces, I want to show you this idea. This is not the right shape or color of a, of a faux flower, but this is a faux forsythia, so I would use something white. But, and this is too long, but I just got this out to show you. If you were using a cylinder, you could fill it up with whatever kind of faux fruit that you have, and then you could just pop your flowers in there. Now, imagine that it's coming clear down to right here. And it would be super cute. So, that's another idea. Obviously, this is the wrong size, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, and then the last thing I want to show you is, um, how to do these adorable cards. Set that right there. Okay. So my favorite um, kind of card to make, because I hate to spend four or five dollars for a card. <laughs> I just think that's completely ridiculous. So I love to use these natural colored cards. These ones are David Tutera brand. I've picked these up a lot of different places, but I think the most recent place I got these was at Joann's, and these are A7 size. So if you think you're gonna wanna get something, write that down, because that is the size of this card. And this packet was probably under $5, and it has 12 cards and 12 envelopes in it. I, and probably I bought it when it was on sale because you know I'm a bargain I'm a bargain hunter I love I love some deals so I just can't recommend these enough you can also get this exact same thing in white but I just love the look of this um, this natural paper and this natural envelope and you can actually mail it um, the postman will actually mail an envelope that's brown. Okay, so this is one that I did yesterday, and I just used that long strip of the stencil and the navy blue ink, and then I always like to put a little something in the corner on the back side of the envelope so that when the recipient, let's put this in here, this is just an extra little touch. So this is where their address would be, or you know their name if you're handing it to them. So when they go to open it, first thing they see is this little lemon, and then they pull their card out, and look, it all coordinates. It's just, that's just how I have always done my cards, with something in the back corner. Okay, so I showed you this one with the navy. Today we're gonna do it in white. And so, let me grab these two same pieces of that stencil and a paper plate. And we're gonna smooch some white out here. Okay. And I need a spreader. Okay, we're gonna use one of these small cut apart spreaders from Maker Studio also. Hey, and if you're, um, if you're watching, oh wow, thank you guys so much for all those stars, that's so kind. If you're watching now and you missed the start of this, as soon as I'm finished, you can go back and watch it from the beginning on replay. And also, I'm going to be giving these two tea towels plus a card away to two people. Um, one tea towel and one card to each person. And to get your name in my hat, all I am asking you to do is to take one second and click that little button down here below to sprinkle this video to your social media so that your friends and family can see it too. Um, and it just, it says share, S-H-A-R-E, somewhere down here, and you just click that and post it on your, your own Facebook page, easy peasy. Okay, so, um, Let's do the card first. And when you're working with these, you're probably saying, duh, but just in case you haven't done cards before, I wanna tell you this. They can either be horizontal or they can be vertical. That's completely up to you. The last one, I stenciled like this, but you know what? It could be vertical as well. 
So I'm just gonna do a band along the bottom, just like I did with the navy blue. And I'm gonna not put it quite all the way to the edge. I think that visually it looks better that way. So I've got something in here off of my desk, a little piece of hot glue or something. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick this stencil on here. These gray stencils, by the way, I haven't said that in case you're new, they are reusable 20, 30 or more times. Uh, you just wash them with cool water in your sink and lay them out to dry. They're adhesive, they're a little stretchy, and they're great. They're great to use. Do not fuzz the gray ones also. Um, yeah, they don't need to be fuzzed in case you're wondering. And if you don't know what that even means, don't worry about it. <laughs> I work with another company that also has stencils and theirs are a little stickier and they need to be fuzzed, but these ones do not. So I'm just pushing this white ink through these holes and I'm trying my best not to go outside of my lines outside of the borders of the stencil. But if I do just a little bit, it's not the end of the world. This is a homemade item, uh, which means that it can have little <laughs> imperfections when it's made by a person and not a machine. So I love the idea of just taking one stencil set and making a bunch of different things with it. I love how versatile this set is. That's what it looks like. And I'm just gonna pull it off and it's adorable. Honestly, I don't know what you think. Tell me in the comments. Let's see if I have it on my table at all. Do you like the blue one? I'll hold them up so you can compare. Or do you like the white one better? Let's come up close. Which way do I need to go? Sorry about that. Purse, oops, I just stuck my finger in it, darn. Okay, personally, I think I like the white one better, but they're both adorable. Okay, let's do the inside of this envelope. So this is the front where you would do your address and your stamp. And I'm gonna do it on the back, and I usually do the back right corner, but that's personal preference. You could also do the little flap if you wanted. And I'm just gonna see how I want this to lay. Um, I'm just gonna have it lay kind of like that. And we're gonna use the rest of this white gel art ink. This one, this part's a little bit easier to do because it's not so little and the margins are bigger. In other words, you don't have to be super duper careful that you don't go outside of the edges of the stencil with this one. Okay, that's pretty much it. Super easy. And let's pull it off. It looks fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So, yeah, so that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you today. Oops, I got a drop on there. Um, that you can use the same stencil set to make cards. You can make a cute rolling pin for your kitchen. Now, this is a decoration, just in case you're wondering. I have had people ask me, can I make a pie crust with this? Mm, I probably wouldn't. This is a, a piece of home decor <laughs> and um, not something to actually put into use in your kitchen. You can also make tea towels. You could make some of these adorable canisters. You could make cloth napkins. You could make some placemats. You could make a table runner. I mean, there's so many things that you could do. You could make your own personal gift wrap. Um, 
you could make book, some little book covers. Uh, yeah, there's tons of different things that you could do with that set. So if you want to take a peek, I did pin some links down here at the bottom of the page. You'll see a little lemon and it says when life gives you lemons stencil and then that's the link to go see that directly just to make it super easy for you. And then down below that it says gel art inks and that's where you would go if you want to look at the blue, hush your mouth or the white, well I declare or the yellow. Oh, what is the yellow one called again? I can't remember. Over yonder. So if you want to look at any of these guys or any of the other colors that they have, that's where you would go. If you want your name to go into my drawing for tomorrow morning, today is Friday, July 2nd, 2021. So if you will sprinkle this video to your Facebook page today, then tomorrow, uh, Saturday morning, July 3rd, I will select randomly two names of the people who have sprinkled and I'll be sending each one of those two people a note card envelope and one of these, these tea towels. If you're watching this on replay, you know, a month from now, a year from now, obviously I will have already sent these out, but you can still sprinkle just for fun if you think your friends um, or acquaintances like these kind of quick, easy, affordable, sometimes a little different kind of craft projects that I do here at DIY Dreaming. So, um, let me know if you have any questions. Oh, thank you so much for sprinkling. Thank you to everyone who um, did the stars. That's very kind of you. Um, let me know if I can explain anything any better for you. And I hope you'll join me later today because I do have something else that I want to show you. I want to show you um, some of my most recent Goodwill finds. And I got the absolute sweetest, well, you guys are so kind to me. Um, this lady earlier this week sent me this beautiful necklace and this bracelet from Origami Owl that I just absolutely loved. I wore them the day that she sent them to me. And then yesterday, another sweet lady sent me a box of goodies that are like vintage treasures that I want to show you. So. If you're watching this on replay, you can go back and find this video. Um, just search uh, July 2nd, 2021 in my videos and it should pull up. Anyways, thanks for watching and do a this or a this. Check to see if you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming and I'll see you guys later for the Goodwill and the box of vintage treasures. Thanks. Let me make a cute little display here before I leave in case you want to do um, a screenshot, which is what people ask me all the time. So let me just quickly throw these things out here for you in case, oops, I don't want to mess up my cards though. junk out of the way back in the background. All right, I think that's pretty good. This is the absolute cutest thing ever. I will try to get some pictures close up so that you can see just how adorable that is. Thank you, Carol. For sharing I appreciate that <laughs> somebody said seriously thank you for displaying for a screenshot old brains want to remember my brain is old too and you know what I, I take screenshots of everything that I see that I like my iPad has like 45,000 images on it and um, sometimes it's fun to just go back and look and say, oh yeah, I really liked that. I wanna try to do something like that. So that is why I try to always give you guys a quick second to take a screenshot if you would like. Okay, Linda, I will answer your question as soon as I'm finished. Let me know if anyone else has questions. 
and I'm gonna say goodbye now. But thank you for joining me, and I'll see you guys later today. Thanks. Bye.